This is Scott Freeman, your auctioneer at auction757.com. I'm here at the City of Norfolk uh, compound, and we're going to do an auction walkthrough today for the upcoming auction scheduled to end on June the 13th, uh, starting at 1030 in the morning. We'll have an inspection here on site on Tuesday, June the 11th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., or we can come out and take a look uh, all around the cars uh, and uh, make sure that there's no damage or parts uh, hanging off of them, that kind of thing. We don't climb underneath the cars, don't look at them. Uh, these cars are impounded cars. I don't believe we have any city surplus in the auction today. So uh, all of these cars uh, uh, were driven in here and we have no knowledge of background. If you are looking for background information, we always recommend using a third-party service uh, such as Carfax. There is a direct link on the website at auction757.com. Uh, they charge for their services, but uh, part of doing the due diligence, we always encourage you to uh, seek uh, the services that they provide. If you have any questions before placing a bid, please reach out to us once you place the bid. Is it a it is a contractual obligation to purchase the vehicles. If you're bidding on one more one uh, or more vehicles, please make sure that you understand uh, if you're bidding on multiple vehicles that you will be buying all of the vehicles. There's no choice if you buy two that you only want one of them. You must take whatever you are the successful high bidder on. With that being said, uh, once again, please come out and see us at the inspection and we're going to uh, go right on through this thing. It's a beautiful day here uh, in Norfolk, so uh, we're going to make it happen. Okay, we're here live. And this is going to be a 2010 Hyundai Sonata, $75 on the key fee. On these key fees, they get added to the hammer price, so keep that in mind. Uh, they had a key made. Uh, once again, that will be added to your final bid price. As you can see, it started right up with a jump. Moved it forward, moved it backward. Very nice sounding uh, engine on this one. So let's take a look at the body and see if we see anything that's uh, major damage. Aftermarket uh, wheels on this one. Looks pretty nice. Look at the back end on the Sonata. Looks pretty good back here. Once again, I'm just going to do an overview for you on these vehicles. Walk around, take a look come out and take a look and do your own uh, thing I'm not going to go inside of the vehicle uh, so you come out and do whatever you need to do to please your own before making any decision to bid on the vehicles. All right, uh, let's move right along. That was lot number one, your 2010 Sonata. Lot number two coming up, and this is gonna be a 2015 Volkswagen Passat. No key on the Passat. Look down the side over here. Don't see anything really clean. Not gonna try to slide in behind it. We'll walk around the other side. Nice looking car. small scuffs up on the front of it looking inside of this one as I walk by folks this one's pretty daggone clean a little ding right there in the doorway not much at all just about the size of a dime nice looking uh, leather interior on this one and that's going to be lot number two, your 2015 Volkswagen Passat. Lot number three coming up, and this is going to be your 2000. converter or not that's been cut out on it but it Do obviously stick. stick shift stick shift on this one and let's go around and then i'm going to 
walk through behind here. Back of it looks pretty good. And back up to the front. Look at your engine compartment on that one. And that's going to be lot number three, your 2002 Jeep Liberty. Once again, $75 on the key fee. Lot number four coming up, and this is going to be a 2009 Chevrolet Cobalt. No key on it. You can see it looks like it has a, uh, well, it does have an issue up here on the front end. Coming around to the back, it's been hit back here as well. around behind looking down the driver sides a few little minor dings nothing uh, major jumping out at me and that's going to be lot number four your 2009 Chevrolet Cobalt coming up we have lot number five and it's going to be a 2006 Ford Focus and we have the key, no additional key fee, at least on my paperwork. If it's in the, uh, if there is an additional fee, it will say it in the description. And uh, that, of course, if there is one, it will be added to your hammer price. Started right up with a jump, moved it forward, and now it's gonna back it back in. Engine sounds good on it. Let's take a look at what we have. Coming down the side, a little bit of a, Crease mark right in there and come around and take a look at the back end back end she looks pretty good a little bit of peeling paint right in there you can see I'll back up and get you a better look and be dealing with the glare this morning a couple of little small things about the size of a dime or a quarter on it engine compartment is still open so a peek at the engine as well and folks, that is lot number five, your 2006 Ford Focus. Lot number six coming up, and it's going to be a 2006 Honda Accord. Okay, on lot number six, it's the 2006 Honda Accord, $125 on the key fee. Has the jump box hooked up to it. See the bumper trim, it's uh, been pulled off and sitting on the ground. Forward forward is going to hit, hit it, move it forward and backward. Let's take a look down the side of it over here. A new replacement door, not a new one, but a replacement door. You can see the bumper trim needs to be uh, reattached and aligned. A little ding back there on the back uh, bumper trim as well. And we'll come back up and go around the driver's side once he gets clear on that one. We've got a cracked windshield as well. And look at the back end. She looks pretty good. A few scuff marks here and there. back up to the front end and that is going to be lot number six your 2006 Honda Accord once again 125 on the key fee lot number seven is going to be a 2008 Nissan Altima as the key started up with a jump one coming back around let's take a look at the back end needs a bath as you can tell and looking good as we come down around over here all right 
And we'll go back up to the front since he has it open still. Look at your engine compartment. And that is going to be lot number seven, your 2008 Nissan Altima. Lot number eight, this is going to be a 2013 Kia Sorento. $100 on your key fee. He has the jump box hooked up to it while he's doing his thing up here. Uh, here it clicking, so she's probably trying trying to en engage, but I don't think it's going to make it. Nope. Got a few dings up here on the front. Let's take a look at the rest of it. As we come back around over here. Looking pretty good on the back end. There's a tail light that's broken out down there. And coming back around over here to the driver's side. And that's all she did on the shoe there, just quick. All right, sorry. Couldn't get it to start up. Body wise, she looks pretty good. Like I said, I pointed out what I see. Got some peeling paint right up in here. And engine compartment. Couldn't get anything to couldn't get it to do anything other than click a few times. That's going to be a look at lot number eight, your 2013 Kia Sorento. Uh, lot number nine coming up, and this is going to be a 2012 Hyundai Sonata, $100 on your key fee. Has the jump box hooked up to it. That's what it's going to do. The engine is uh, turning over, but it's not engaging to start it up. So let's take a look and see what we have body-wise. Looks pretty good as I look down the passenger side. Coming around to the back end. It looks pretty clean from the back side. And I think we're going to try to walk through there. We're in the poison ivy season, so I'm not trying to engage in any of that. Looks pretty good on the driver's side. The mirror is missing over here. The actual mirror part of it is missing. Close up. And we'll come back around to the front end. And that's going to be a look at lot number nine, your 2012 Hyundai Sonata. Lot number 10, this is going to be a 2007 Pontiac G6. No key on the Pontiac. Look down the side. Some scratches. Looks like something may have either uh, somebody may have keyed it or definitely scratched the side. Back end's looking pretty good. Some scratches up on top of the deck right here. Coming back around. This looks like a race tire. She's so bald. And coming around over here. Uh, you see where it hit something right there on that front quarter. Coming down the side over here. She looks pretty good. Some dings and scratches as we come down the side. Uh, I'm going to go back up to the front. And that is a look at lot number 10. Your 2007 Pontiac G6. Lot number 11, this is going to be a 2005 Honda Accord. Started right up with a jump. Working it forward. And backward. And let's take a look at it. Got a cracked windshield on it. Looking down the side over here, she doesn't look too bad. Some scratches as we come down the side. Back end of it's looking pretty good as well. Got a ding right there in the deck. Another ding up in here. You can see the uh, paint has uh, chipped off or peeled off. Engine compartment is open take a look at it and looking down the side over here a ding right there on the uh, do door 
on the driver's side, the rear door. And coming back up. That is going to be a look at lot number 11, your 2005 Honda Accord. Lot number 12, this is going to be a 2004 Honda Accord. No key on this one. We have some peeling paint. As we come down the side, some dings in the side of it. Coming around to the back end. Nothing really jumping out. Got a cracked window right here. It looks like it's uh, cracked because of the sun, but uh, also it looks like it may have had some impact right in there that's causing it, it may have caused it to crack all the way down. All right, and back up to the front end, folks. That is lot number 12, your 2004 Honda Accord. Lot number 13 coming up, and this is gonna be a 2006 BMW 325. All right, no key on the BMW. You can see where we have a wrinkle on it right in there. And looking down the side over here, don't really see anything uh, from my point of view. Once again, um, you need to come out, take a look at it. Uh, not only is the glare bad, but I may just may not see the damage uh, that you need to see. Bumper trim is uh, loose right there. It needs to be uh, aligned and reattached. Come back around over here, looking down the driver's side. Some dings in it here and there. Scratches, scuffs, look at the back end. Come back up to the front. You can see the dings in the door, on the uh, driver's door back up and that is a look at lot number 13 your 2006 bmw lot number 14 coming up and this is going to be a 2012 nissan altima no key on this one has the hood up look at your engine compartment and let's take a look at the body looking down the side over here you see the bumper trim back there has uh Come loose and needs to be reattached. Maybe we can get a better look from the other side. And looking down the driver's side, you can see the trim over here on the front. Same thing. Some peeling paint up in here on the front. Like somebody tried to touch it up with some paint or primer. And look at the back end, climb back here a little bit. There you go. And that's going to be a look at lot number 14 here, 2012 Nissan Altima. Lot number 15 coming up, and this is going to be a 2009 BMW 750. No key on the BMW. Back in, let's go around to the other side. Don't really see much of uh, some scuffs here and there. Don't see anything really jumping out at me that I need you to point out looking down the other side. Of course, once again, I may have missed it. You can see some door marks on it red door mark got a ding right here in the fender on the on the rear and look at the back end she looks pretty good back here a little peeling paint area where luggage may have hit it something going into uh, the trunk area and that is going to be a look at lot number 15 your 2009 bmw 750 Lot number 16, this is going to be a 2017 Chevrolet Cruze. Has the key, has the jump box hooked up to it. And while he's doing that, there we go. Wow, started right up and super quiet on this one. 
Okay, on lot number 16, uh, started right up with a jump. I uh, was just informed. Can't figure out how to get it to go into gear. There's a release on there uh, somewhere. Uh, but uh, can't figure it Actually, I think he just figured it out. Into reverse and back forward. So he figured it all out and forward and backward. So uh, very quiet car and like I said, moved it forward and backward. Let's get a look at the rest of it. And I can tell you she needs a bath, but other than that, I don't really see anything uh, jumping out at me. You can see the racks up on the top on this one. Very clean on the engine side of it. Let's take a look down the driver's side. Got a little ding right there in the door where the front door matches up with the back one. Got a little hole uh, going out. So somebody uh, appears to have shot from the inside at something outside. And look at the back end on it. She looks pretty good. And that's going to be a look at lot number 16, your 2017 Chevrolet Cruze. Okay, our next lot we have is going to be lot number 17. This is going to be a 2011 Kia Sorento. No key on the Sorento. Has the engine compartment open on this one. We'll look at it. And let's take a look down the passenger side. It looks pretty good, what I can see. And go around to the driver's side there, some damage. Got a cracked windshield as well. As you can see up there, she is cracked. Looking down the side over here, scratches and dings uh, coming down the, the whole side. Window is down or broken out, one of the two. Look at the back end of it. And let me see if, going back up, if I can actually see the window in there. Uh, yes, the window is in there. So there's an issue with the uh, window, I guess, not closing. But we don't have a key, so I'm not going to be able to tell you. Most of the damage, folks, it looks like is right here on the front corner. And that's going to be a look at lot number 17, your 2011 Kia Sorento. Lot number 18, it's going to be a 1997 Honda Accord. No key on the Accord. Engine compartment is up. Uh, compartment is open. Hood is up is what I was trying to say. Looking down the side, looks like somebody has tried to paint uh, over it with a flat black some primer it looks like on that door let's go around to the side you can see the wrinkle right there hit something coming around to the driver's side i don't see anything really jumping out at me damage wise we'll slide around to the back trunk is open so i don't know if uh just not closing or i'm not going to guess well it was just open that's all so that's going to be a look at lot number 18 your 1997 honda accord lot number 19 coming up and this is going to be a 1998 toyota camry no key on the camry we have the damage up front up here the wheel is there, but uh, it's uh, pretty mangled up. Got a cracked windshield, mirrors uh, broken off. Going back to the back over here. Let's look at that side. Let's get you a look from the other view. Coming around over here on this side. Driver side looks pretty good. Some dings in there about the size of a 50 cent piece or a quarter. As I look down the side, nothing uh, really major seems like jumping out at me. And that's going to be a look. Oh, it is a uh, bio car. 
uh, airbag had deployed from the accident. So uh, bio meaning, uh, usually meaning that there was uh, uh, blood inside of the vehicle. And just wanted to make sure they pointed that out. That is lot number 19, your 1998 Toyota Camry. Lot number 20 coming up, and this is going to be a 1996 Jeep Cherokee. No key on it. Look down the side over here. Damage up in the front right there. Cracked windshield, you didn't notice. Coming around the side over here. Has some luggage uh, on the inside. Sword in there. It's like, uh, other than the luggage, it's like it might be uh, uh, either a carry-on piece of luggage or a couple of them uh, several pieces of luggage inside so uh, whatever's in it it's going to be yours the bike on top as well nice looking bike and that's going to be lot number 20 your 1996 jeep lot number 21 coming up and this is going to be a 2005 toyota camry has the key on it has the jump box hooked up doesn't sound very good getting a click and that's going to be about it folks that's all right the mileage went right up on it all right i think it because the fuse block got whacked and that might be about i don't know but gotcha just wanted to show you what it would do all right guys some peeling paint over here a little bullet hole right there and a couple of bullet holes in the doors over here both the front and the rear door got a little wrinkle back there on the back corner and let's go around engine compartment uh, uh, view right there. Okay. The extensive damage that you can see. All right. And looking down the side over here. Back to the back. As we come back up, you can see the hole that is right there. From uh, that appears to be another uh, bullet hole from the inside uh, going out. Cracked windshield on it as well. And that's going to be a look at lot number 21, your 2005 Toyota Camry. Lot number 22, this is going to be a 2011 Chevrolet Impala. No key on this one. Look down the side really see much going on some peeling paint where it's brushed on the front front corners right up here loaded with stuff inside I have no idea what's in there loaded with all kinds of things look at the back end of it looks pretty good Folks, I didn't see a whole lot uh, that I could point out to you on this one. But once again, make sure you come out, take a look. No key on this one. That's lot number 22, your 2011 Chevrolet Impala. Coming up is going to be lot number 23. This is going to be a 1993 Nissan Sentra. No key on the Sentra. Looking down the passenger side, you can see where she's been wrecked over here on the side. Going around to the back end. Put some tape and all kinds of things to try to take care of uh, the damage. Engine compartment is open on it, no battery in it. Looking down the side over here, front door has a ding right there where it uh, closes. Has some peeling paint right around the window area, rust starting to uh, appear. Look at the back end on it, looks pretty good on the back ends. Some scuffs and scratches. Back up to the front end, and that's going to be a look at lot number 23, your 1993 Nissan Sentra. 
Lot number 24 coming up. This is going to be a 2006 Nissan. I'm sorry. Lot number 24 is going to be a 2006 Kia Spectra. Kia Spectra. You can see the peeling paint right there on the uh, hood. Damage right there on the front fender. More damage all the way down the side over here. Coming around. Slide around behind it. Look at your back end. And coming back up the driver's side, you have the trim missing down there on the door. The door handle is, uh, both door handles are broken off over there. And folks, that's going to be a look at lot number 24, your 2006 Kia Spectra. Lot number 25, this is going to be a 2007 Nissan Altima. No key on the Altima. Got a cracked windshield, as you can see right there. Body wash looking pretty good. Got some damage back here. You can see uh, that whole door all the way back into where it starts into the uh, rear fender area. And let's take a look at the back of it. And back of it looks pretty good. We have some damage over here. Looks like it's mainly uh, with the bumper trim where it needs to be reattached. Got a hole right in here. Looks like it's probably a, I'm guessing a gunshot going in. Right there. Got some dings. Bumper trim up here is loose. Needs to be reattached. Once again, the cracked windshield on it. And that's gonna be a look at lot number 25, your 2007 Nissan Altima. Lot number 26 coming up, and this is going to be a 2006 Nissan Altima. $85 on the key fee on this one. Jump box is hooked up to it. Trying to get it to start. Would it start the other day, Larry? Yeah, she did. She blew a lot of smoke, but she did sign. She did go and get and stuff. But, yeah, that's it. But, uh, he said, uh, yeah, can't get it started today, but it did start the other day, uh, blowing a lot of smoke. Uh, would go into gear. So today we have uh, a low or a flat tire over here. Uh, could not get it to start up today. Look at the back end. She looks pretty good. Coming back up, I have uh, trim right there. This is loose. I tried to tape it back down. Come back up to the front end of it. Bumper trim is uh, loose. Needs to be reattached, aligned, and reattached. And that's going to be a look at lot number 26, your 2006 Nissan Altima. Lot number 27. This is going to be a 2012 Chevrolet Cruze. $125 on your key fee. You can see the damage in the front. Light hanging out down at the bottom. Bumper trim cracked. Has the jump box hooked up to it. And that's all she's going to do. So we'll come back around. Take a look at it. Looking back up. See a couple little small dings, nothing major. Look at the back end, some scratches on it. Looks pretty clean. And we'll go back up to the front. Other than the trim right up here uh, and the front end damage that you see, don't see a whole lot going on. That's going to be a look at lot number 27, your 2012 Chevrolet Cruze. Once again, 125 on the key fee. Lot number 28, this is going to be a 2003 Mitsubishi Outlander. No key on this one. Step back, a couple of dings in the front door right there. Some rust that's starting to appear 
right there, peeling, uh, bubbling up the paint. And look at the back end, some more peeling paint. On the back end, looking back up the driver's side, some scratches. Trim needs to be uh, reattached on it. Some damage on that uh, bumper trim. And that's going to be a look at lot number 28, your 2003 Mitsubishi Outlander. Lot number 29 coming up. This is going to be a 2007 Chevrolet Malibu. No key on the Malibu. some tape holding the mirror so I'm guessing that it is trying to fall out right there looking down the side I can see some dents and dings nothing uh, you know, gigantic nothing huge jumping out at me peeling paint on the back end some uh, damage on the taillight lens cover up on top right there it is cracked or chipped I should say let's go back up the driver's side some scratches damage right in there you can see it's dented or the bumper trim is uh, where it meets the fender is messed up has some uh, paint missing right there on the hood area and has started to rust and that's going to be a look at lot number 29 your 2007 Chevrolet Malibu lot number 30 coming up and this is going to be a 2006 Chevrolet Equinox no key on the Equinox have some paint missing right there doesn't look like it's really even started to rust it's starting to uh, form that if somebody doesn't uh, touch it up all right uh, let's cross over and take a look back up I don't see much. I see two flat tires on this side. Uh, by the way, no mechanical work to be done here on site, folks. You can come out and blow up a tire or jump a vehicle, but uh, no mechanical work uh, is allowed on the premises. You have the dent right there in the uh, rear deck. Coming back up the driver's side, some trim missing right there on the door. Back up to the front end, and that's lot number 30, your 2006 Chevrolet Equinox. Lot number 31, this is going to be a 2006 Chevrolet Malibu. No key on the Malibu. Look back up. some damage right here where it's uh, been side swiped come back up towards the front end peeling paint right there on top of the fender scuffs right up here on the front end and that is lot number 31 your 2006 Malibu lot number 32 this is going to be a 2004 Honda Odyssey no key on the Odyssey see where it's been wrecked up here on the front Scratches uh, all the way down on it. I'll walk around the other side instead of trying to go through the two foot weeds. Looks like it might contain some stuff that I don't want to get involved with. And we'll go back down the side over here, the driver's side. Scratches, flat tire right over here. Damage on the back end of it. That's going to be a look at lot 32, your 2004, 2004 Honda Odyssey. Lot number 33, this is going to be a 2008 Nissan Altima. Wrecked in the front, no key on it. Looking down the side. 
a few wrinkles here and there. Uh, some parts inside. Looks like the bumper trim uh, from the front is inside of it. Uh, can't see much else going on there. Something else, a box or something inside. It might be an empty box, but a box just the same. Bumper trim back here missing. It could be what's inside. Some bumper trim from somewhere. Goes to something inside of the car. Got some peeling paint over here. Obviously the damage that you see back over here. I'll back up where you can get a better look at it. That's the damage that we see. And that's going to be a look at lot number 33, the 2008 Altima. Lot number 34, this is going to be a 2000 BMW 528. No key on the BMW. Got a cracked windshield damage up here on the uh, rim is shot. Tires off of the rim. Looking down the side over here, she looks pretty good. Back end of it looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the driver's side. Same thing, she looks pretty good. Most of the damage being right up in the front. And that is lot number 34, your 2000 BMW 528. Okay. Lot number 35, this is gonna be a 2004 Lincoln Navigator. No key on the Navigator. side over here don't see anything really popping at me a couple little dings right in there Got flat tire on the front passenger side bumper trim is hanging down over here and look down the driver side you have some peeling paint up on the top rain guard uh, shield right there is cracked over the door looking down the rest of it she looks pretty good Look at the back end from what I can see back here. Don't see really anything jumping out at me. Uh, go back up to the front. And that's going to be a look at lot number 35, your 2004 Lincoln. I said Navigator earlier. Aviator. Lincoln Aviator. Okay, lot number 36. This is going to be a 1990 Chevrolet GMT 400 pickup truck. All right. There's some damage right there on the grill where she's missing something. Custom rims been added to it. Got a toolbox on the back. Loaded down with uh, looks like work clothes. Whatever it is, it's all going to go with you. Let's go around and look at the other side. Get a uh, seat in here is pulled loose, and we have the clothes once again in the back. Looks like uh, there's something else back in here. I don't know if that's tools or looks like it might be a bike or something i'm not sure exactly what that is inside of it but folks it all conveys and that's going to be a look at lot number 36 your 1990 chevrolet truck lot number 37 coming up and this is going to be a 1997 f-250 no key on the 250 get you a look at the truck engine compartment when we come back the trim around the wheel well that is loose some tools uh, are part of a something back there and a shovel in the back of the truck coming back around the engine compartment is open once again no key on this one we'll look down the side of it she looks pretty good looking down the side on the driver's side 
look at the back end tailgates not going to close and that's going to be a look at lot number 37 your 1997 ford f-250 lot number 38 that's going to be a 1998 ford e-250 van no key on the van let's take a look down the passenger side don't see a whole lot going on over there. You got some rust that's uh, down at the bottom right there by the wheel well. Coming back around, let's take a look at the other side of it. The driver's side, I don't see a whole lot happening here. Slide through, same thing with the rust uh, that is uh, started back here on the back end right there on the uh, wheel well on both sides. Door's not going to close. Uh, somebody's hit it back there and kind of whacked things up. Bumper is not uh, is hanging down on an angle and that's hanging, but uh, angled down. So it's been uh, ran into something or whatever, and it, it needs to be realigned or repaired. All right, and that's going to be a look at your E250 van lot number 38 coming across we have lot number 39 coming up and this is going to be a 2007 chevrolet avalanche 85 dollars on the key fee uh pickup truck uh he has the jump box hooked up to it as soon as he uh clears on this one well uh mosquitoes are getting me Look at the uh, side down there. Yep. There's the jump box hooked up to it. Trying to start. Cannot get it to start. So that, that's what she's going to do. So we'll switch sides over here and we'll take a look down driver's side you got some uh, paint that's fading on the front end up here coming down the side don't really see anything tail uh, tail light missing on the back uh, as long and the uh, tailgate as well folks that's going to be a look at your chevrolet avalanche lot number 39 a lot number 40 coming up and this is going to be a 2000 kia sophia no key on the kia it has a key but i didn't do nothing with it didn't even attempt to get it to it. okay it says he does have a key on it uh, but it, uh, couldn't get it to do anything all right uh, let's slide through on this one Look at the back end with the peeling paint. You can see the damage up here on the front quarter coming all the way around. And that is lot number 40, your 2000 Kia Sophia. Uh, the next lot we have is going to be lot number 41. And this is going to be the Suzuki motorcycle. get my paperwork straight okay this is going to be a 1986 gv 1400 on the motorcycle uh, no key on it right, let's get a better look going to say much i'm just going to let you look at see what i see I'll look at the back end of it and that's going to be lot number 41 once again your 1986 suzuki gv 1400 okay we're on lot number 42 this is going to be a 2004 mercedes c300 no key on the mercedes you see the damage up front you got a tire issue uh, front and rear moon roof is open 
appears that the glass is there. And let's go down the side over here. We have some damage in the back over here. Air curtain has deployed. You can see the back end with the damage back here. Doesn't look like the airbags on the front deployed, but the uh, side one uh, uh, definitely uh, deployed. And that's going to be lot 42, your 2004 Mercedes C300. Lot number 43, this is going to be a 2005 Dodge Ram 1500. $75 on your key fee. And I think that's what she's going to do, folks. That's what she does. Trying to turn over and start up. Got some rust uh, going on back here around the fender well. Uh, nice uh, toolbox on the back. Back end of the uh, pickup truck. Four by four. And coming back up the driver's side. She looks pretty good over here. Really see anything jumping out at me? Engine compartment, no battery in it. And close this so you can actually see what we have going on. Back up. That's going to be lot number 43, your 2005 Dodge Ram 1500. Lot number 44 coming up, and this is going to be a 2004 Ford E250 on the van. And look down the side. We have some peeling paint down through there, a couple of dings. And back towards the back. A dent in the bumper. Some peeling paint on it as well. And let's go around to the other side and see what we have. The engine compartment is open on it. And some damage up here on the where the door meets the front fender. The rest of it should look pretty good as I head towards the back. Already shown you the back end. You see the, the scratches here and there. Dings on the door where they've hit some buildings or other cars. And that's going to be a look at lot 44. The 2004 Ford E250. Lot number 45. This is going to be a 2008 Ford Taurus. Has the key on it. Have some damage right here. The fender trim, uh, bumper trim is loose on it. That's the damage with the hood, as you can see. Folks, you started right up. No jump needed on it. Uh, that's a good sign. Moving it forward. And backward. Engine sounds really good on this one. Had the trim down at the bottom. She is pulled loose. Look at the back end of the Ford back here. Some dings, scratches, nothing, uh, nothing major. The coating on the uh, bumper trim is peeling. Got a uh, broken window back here on the corner. Low tire, mm, close to being flat. Actually, it might be flat. Coming back up, this is a couple little small dings, but. Uh, most of your damage appears to be here. And that's a look at lot number 45, the 2008 Ford Taurus. All right. Lot number 46. This is going to be a 2005 Lincoln Aviator. It appears that a uh, rock or a bullet hole uh, in the windshield on this one. The tire is off the rim. 
on the passenger front side. Some scratches as we come down the side of it over here. Back window is uh, broken out. Back down the side. You can see right there. All the way out. Looking back up the side over here, she looks pretty good. I see some dings in the door. Once again, both tires uh, on the front are flat. Back up to the front, and that's 46, your 2005 Lincoln Aviator. Lot number 47, this is gonna be a 2004 Porsche uh, Cayenne. And no key on the uh, Porsche. Looking down the side, she looks pretty good. Back around over here. Looks real good on the back end. Don't see anything at all jumping out at me. A couple little dings over here. Window has tape on it. Uh, the driver's window has tape on it. Not feeling the window in there. Not sure if that means that it is missing or not but i don't see it inside of the channel back up to the front end and that's going to be lot 47 your 2004 porsche cayenne lot number 48 this is going to be a 1996 subaru legacy has the key on it and trying to turn over but will not start Got a cracked windshield. Let's take a look at the body. Got a ding right here in the rear door coming up right there. Have a broken window on the back end as well. So you can see a better look at that damage on the uh, door over here. Coming around this all wheel drive legacy. Got some scuff marks as we come down the driver's side. Other than that, don't see a whole lot going on airbag uh, both airbags in the front have deployed on it and that is a look at lot number 48 your 1996 subaru legacy lot number 49 this is going to be a 2003 infinity m45 no key on the infinity have your light right there the turn signal light uh, up on the front is hanging out. Uh, I'm not sure if it's broken or not, but it is hanging out. I would assume that it is broken, it needs to be replaced. Look at the back end. I can see a few dings, but nothing uh, really jumping out at me. Has the moon roof all oh, looks like it's there. Coming back around to the other side on the infinity. See on the side over here, got a little wrinkle right there on the fender, not, not anything major doesn't appear that it is all the way to the back don't see much going on back there uh, back up to the front end and that's a look at lot number 49 your 2003 infinity m45 lot number 50 this is going to be a 2002 nissan frontier no key on the frontier the damage up here running the uh, spare donut tire has some scratches as we come down the side back end of it she looks pretty good and let's go around to the driver's side to see what we have going on have the damage right in there we can see the rust and scuff marks right there on the front corner. Damage back here, uh, dings right there in the bed on the pickup truck. Not, not anything that is huge, huge, but uh, does have a couple of dings. Main biggest one appears to be right there. And back up to the front end. And that's a look at lot number 50, your 2002 Nissan Frontier. Lot number 51, this is gonna be a 2004 Dodge Durango. $85 on the key fee. Have some peeling paint over here on the corner. As it's on my pickup here. Let's go 
started right up to the jump. Doesn't want to run long enough to get it under gear. Wants to cut off, but it did go into gear. Move it forward. And backwards. It appears that the uh, brakes are locked on it. It does move on it. Actually, he said that he had to have it uh, with uh, giving it gas with his foot on the brake so uh, not sure if there's uh, a brake issue but it uh, uh, had to have uh, more gas to keep it running in order to get it into gear looking at the back of it she looks pretty good got some rust that's trying to form underneath the paint right in there you can see it where it's bubbling up other than that she looks pretty good going down the driver's side got a wrinkle right here in the front fender Peeling paint up on the deck. Folks, she looks pretty good all the way around on it. I don't see anything really jumping out. And that's lot 51, your 2004 Dodge Durango. Lot number 52, this is going to be a 2012 Nissan Altima. No key on the Altima. Fender's been replaced up front. Got some loose trims. Got uh, where it sides, something that sides wiped uh, all the way down. On the passenger side, looking around the back end, don't see much going on back there. Let's go back up to the front, look down the driver's side. It looks pretty good over here. I can see some dings. Uh, mainly the biggest one that I see is right there in the rear door down at the bottom. About the size of a quarter down there. Uh, the rest of it looks pretty good back up to the front and that's lot 52 your 2012 nissan ultima we're on lot number 53 and this is going to be a 2008 camera 85 dollars on the key fee uh, you can see the wheel is off started up with a jump blew a little bit of smoke when it started up and don't think that he's going to try to move it might try to put it in gear but uh, with the wheel not doing it uh, not going to go into here. Got a uh, axle problem that you can hear, and maybe we'll see something when we get to the other side. So, I didn't see any run from the other day, so I'm pleased. Looking down the side over here, just some minor uh, dings here and there. Bumper trim back here is cracked. Sounds like an axle issue. Look at your engine compartment. And back over here, once again, that is lot number 53, your 2008 Toyota Camry. Lot number 54 coming up, and this is going to be a 2004 Ford F-150. $85 on the key fee on the truck. <clears throat> while he's getting hooked up over there we'll look at the back end on the driver's side the very back end coming down the side over here normal truck tends for pickup truck jump box up with the truck he's blowing some smoke on it Sounds like the fan shroud is, uh, blade is hitting the shroud on it. And we'll look down the side over here. Got a flat tire up in the front. And that's going to be a look at your Ford pickup truck.
on that uh, Ford pickup truck, uh, it may be a rod that is thrown in there. Uh, since it is smoking up front, that's probably uh, the issue. Uh, but you make your own decision on it and bid accordingly. Lot number 55, this is going to be a 1994 Mercedes S500. No key on the Mercedes. Look down the side over here, the trim down there at the bottom, hanging down a little bit. Coming around to the back end, she looks pretty good on the back end. Over here, I'm gonna go around to the driver's side and look back. And some peeling uh, paint on it. Couple of spots here and there. Looking down the driver's side, she looks pretty good. And flat tire up here on the front over on, on this side, bumper trim uh, loose uh, as you can see and hanging down. That is lot 55, your 1994 Mercedes S500. Lot number 56 coming up and this is gonna be a 2008 Nissan Frontier. You see where she's been wrecked up here. No key on the uh, Nissan. Around to the back end. Look at the very back. And let's slide through the back up the driver's side. We have some peeling paint back here on the front of wheels. Start of some rust coming through. Airbag deployed, uh, obviously doing what it should do on the front end uh, wreck back up to the front and that's lot 56 your 2008 nissan frontier lot number 57 coming up and this is going to be a 2010 toyota corolla 85 dollars on your key fee has the jump box hooked up to it don't think she's uh, going to get much while he's trying to uh, reattach see if it will let's go back around looking down the Passenger side, she looks really good. Coming back here, on the back end of it looks good as well. You see some scratches on it. Uh, she started right up with a jump. Quiet engine on the Toyota. Moved it forward and backward. You see the bumper trim right there. You know, I have the tape holding it up on there. So uh, I'm going to say that needs to be replaced. Uh, once that is replaced, you'll have a, a definitely a different looking car. Engine compartment is open. Let's take a look at it. Real quick on this one there, Scotty, there, to get it out of, get to make the gear shift move, I had to push the gear shift release button inside there. It won't come off normally, so it's probably a neutral safety switch or something, keeping it from going, but you know, you're able to bypass it and move it forward and back. Okay, so he was able to move it. There is uh, some kind of a, uh, a safety switch button on it, uh, but he was able to bypass it to get it to move, but it does need to be repaired. All right, looking down the side of it over here, uh, you can see the scuff marks down the side over there and uh, down towards the bottom and it goes uh, across both doors down there the damage on it back up to the front and that's going to be a look at lot 57 your 2010 toyota corolla Lot number 58, this is going to be a 2008 Chrysler Sebring. No key on the Sebring. You see the cracked windshield there. The tire uh, is uh, uh, flat on the front. Deck back uh, here has some rust uh, spot on it. And looking back up the passenger side, she looks pretty good. Looking the driver's side you got uh, handles uh, that are broken off of both of them back up to the front and that's lot 58 your 2008 Chrysler Sebring lot number 59 this is going to be a 2006 Chrysler 300 no key on the Chrysler the damage up front with some rust right in there and 
let's uh, take a look look on the side over here i'm not seeing anything really jumping out of me and it's bad there's some peeling paint down there at the bottom where it's some brush marks all the way across the back the same thing i'm going to slide through the little hole that's here and back up where you can take a look you can see where it looks like somebody has hammered out the uh the damage that was there literally with a hammer and going back up to the front bumper trim uh, looks like it was replaced but not uh, attached properly or it's been uh, wrecked since and that's going to be a look at lot 59 your 2006 Chrysler 300. Lot number 60. This is going to be a 2009 Toyota Yaris. No key on the Yaris. Damage in the front where it's been wrecked. Scratches coming down the side of it over here. Get you a look at the back end. Tail lights broken out over here on this side. Peeling paint. Scratches and dings as we come around. Let's go back over here on this side. Looking down the side, same thing, scratches and dings. Damage up here on the front. Cracked windshield. Trim issues, fender issues. And that's lot number 60, your 2009 Toyota Yaris. Lot number 61, this is going to be a 1997 f-150 no key on the f-150 got a cracked windshield coming down the side dents and dings on the pickup truck be shocked if it didn't have it and ding right there in the uh, tailgate as you can see broken window on the uh, back end of the uh, cab up front looking down the side over here she looks pretty good some dings a couple of dings nothing really major jumping out back up to the front end and that is lot 61 your 97 ford f-150 lot number 62 this is going to be a 2006 subaru trebeca 85 dollars on your key fee on the trebeca has some nice uh, rims on this one <laughs> Jump box hooked up. Load it up with a jump. Move it forward. And backward. Look at your hands and compartment on it. Uh, let's get a look at the rest of it here. We'll go down. over here you can see the uh, scuff marks on the back end don't see anything really jumping out uh, peeling paint uh, kind of thing where it's been scuffed looking down the driver's side the uh, wheel up here has uh, an issue once again uh, cracked windshield I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier but it does have a cracked windshield on it back up to the front where we started and look at your engine compartment that is lot 62 your 2006 subaru trebeca lot number 63 this is going to be a 2007 ford taurus no key on the taurus we have the damage right here our bumper trim is cracked ding in the uh, dent in the uh, hood looking down the passenger side don't see really a whole lot going on peeling paint scuffs, scuffs as you can see right there all the way down that, that side got a broken tail light on the other side we'll get around there and get a better look at it and let's get over there and take a look down the side over here just the peeling paint i don't see a whole lot jumping out there's your damage that i was referring to 
tail lights broken out on it and the damage right there on the rear quarter. Some uh, rust that's starting to tie, start up on the very top. Doesn't look like it is uh, going through. Back up to the front end and that is lot 63, your 2007 Ford Taurus. Lot number 64 coming up and this is gonna be a 2006 Lexus RS. 125 on the key fee. Has the jump box hooked up to it. Has some tape going on, some peeling paint. Well, she does, everything lights up and odds up. But Dash 40 says lights up, lights light up, but uh, not going to do anything beyond that. All right, and we'll come around to the back end. The back end on your Lexus is looking pretty good. Has some scuff marks, mainly right there. Doesn't look like it's major. Coming back around, that was the peeling uh, paint or trim. And looking down the driver's side, she looks pretty good over here. Body-wise, she looks pretty good all the way around. Some scratches and uh, minor dings in it, but I don't see anything that I noticed uh, as being major. The uh, compartment cover right there uh, for the battery compartment, the cover that goes on it. It's off to the side. Battery is in it. Dated 823 on that battery. Yep, 823. <laughs> and that is lot 64, your 2006 Lexus RS, RX. All right, lot number 65. This is going to be a 1999 Chrysler 300. No key on the Chrysler. Has some damage in the front. We'll get you a look at that in here in a, in a minute, a little better. Coming around, got a flat tire on the back uh, passenger side. The very back end of it. Just some scratches and peeling paint back here, fading peeling paint. Coming back around, go back up to the front end up here bumper trim is out of alignment and the hood deck uh, up here is uh, you can see the damage where the rust is coming through on it the uh, fender up here was replaced and uh, I'll let you make your own judgment on when you come out and take a look at it but uh, it's definitely not aligned uh, the way it should be uh, the damage right there, the ding right here in the rear fender on the driver's side. Back up to the front, that's lot 65, your 1999 Chrysler 300. Lot number 66 coming up, and this is going to be a 2008 Chrysler PT Cruiser, $85 on the key fee. While he's getting a key in it. Let him uh, do that. We got the bumper trim over here that uh, needs to be reattached or uh, it's she's broken dash off. Light up. Dash lights up. It's not going to do anything, but the uh, key that is there will uh, allow the light to light up uh, your uh, on the on the uh, instrument panel. Damage right here on the back end. As you can see, the bumper trim back there, down here at the bottom, is messed up. Coming across. Over here, the flat tire on the back end on that. Going back up to the front, she doesn't look too uh, bad. Bumper trim, uh, once again, over here is loose. Uh, took the cover off uh, there. Is your um, cover put back in place. Battery is there for it. And that is a look at lot number 66 the 2008 PT Cruiser. Lot number 67, this is going to be a 2007 Dodge Nitro. $85 on the key fee. Started right up with a jump, moving it forward. And backward. 
Got to lower a flight. Try that again. Got a lower flat tire over here on the uh, passenger rear. Have uh, the fender that is uh, missing the trim work on this side where you can see where it was hit. Uh, look at your engine compartment that was there. Once again, started right up uh, with a jump on it. 3.7 V6 engine on this one. Look at the back end of the nitro. She looks pretty good back here. And let's go around to the other side. Looking down the driver's side. She looks pretty good over here. You can see the uh, trim up here on the front that is missing on the other side. And that's going to be lot 67. Your 2007 Dodge Nitro. Lot number 68. This is going to be a 2009 Chevrolet Cobalt. No key on the Cobalt. Uh, the damage in the front, airbags deployed up here. Got a damage uh, spot right there on the door underneath the mirror. Going back to the back side back here. Looks pretty good body wise. Let's walk around to the driver's side. And once again, you can see the damage up here. Around to the driver's side and looking down, a little donut tire on the back end back there. Had some tape, or maybe that's a rain shield that was on there that is no longer there. I would say that's probably what it is. Didn't notice it on the other side. Once got an uh, airbag deployed on it, uh, that uh, trim or uh, rain shield is uh, not there on either side. And that's lot 68, your 2009 Chevrolet Cobalt. Lot number 69, this one is a 1998 Volvo V70. No key on it. Look down the side, the back end of it, just scratches. Uh, as far as what I can see, uh, the trim up here needs to be replaced on it. Missing uh, the turn signal assembly right there. Coming around to the side over here, uh, looking down the driver's side. She looks pretty good, especially for a model. Uh, this age group and that's a 1998 Volvo V70 lot number 69 lot number 70 coming up and this is going to be a 2002 Chevrolet Malibu no key on the Malibu you see the mirror is broken off right there have some fading paint as we come down the side and look at the back end on the Malibu don't see anything on this side. We'll go down the other side and see if we can see anything from the driver's side. Peeling paint. Mirror off over here. Uh, window is uh, off of the track. Uh, I don't know if it's broken or not. I'm not going to mess with it. Let's see if it's uh, broken or not. But obviously it is off of the track sticking up and that's going to be lot number 70 your 2002 malibu lot number 71 this is going to be a 2014 chevrolet caprice no key on the caprice and you can see the bumper trim back here how it's been pulled off Let's go back up and look down the other side and look at your engine compartment. I don't know if uh, there's something missing uh, it appears there, but I don't know that for sure.
And back to the back where we can see where that trim is pulled loose. Yeah, the doors open on it. Actually pretty clean in the back. Look up at the uh, front of it since it is open. Same way up here, it doesn't look too bad. And that's a look at lot 71, your 2014 Chevrolet Caprice. Lot number 72, this is going to be a 1997 Mitsubishi Eclipse. No key on the Eclipse. Look down the side, dings uh, here and there. Looks like they tried to repair maybe a, a, a leaking window on the convertible top. Look at the back end coming up the driver's side to the front. And that is lot 72, your 97 Mitsubishi Eclipse. Lot number 73, this is going to be a 2015 Nissan Rogue. $85 on the key fee. No wheels on this one. Has the jump box hooked up to it. $85 on the key fee. Started right up for the jump. So it sounds very, uh, very good. Obviously, it's not going to move with uh, being up on the uh, jack stand. Let's take a look at it. Got a couple of dings back here in the rear deck. Other than that, she looks pretty good. It's looking real good as we come up the driver's side. Jack stands do not go with the car. Is that correct, Larry? Yeah. Jack stands belong to the city. All right, the bumper trim is missing on the front end. As you can see, once again, jack stands do not convey. Overall, she looks pretty good. And that's a look at lot number 73, your Nissan Rogue. Lot number 74, this is gonna be a 2006 Mercedes CLK 500, no key on this one. Got it covered up, uh, I'm guessing probably a leaking roof uh, on it. Look at the side, she's looking pretty good back here. Got that little piece down there that is uh, hanging down, that it is there. And looking up the side over here, she looks pretty good. Let me see if I can get you a peek. Lift up the cover on this one. And look at the inside of it. Actually looks uh, pretty good. On it, and you can see the console there has the damage. And that's going to be a look at lot number 74, your 2006 Mercedes CLK 500. Lot number 75, this is going to be a 1995 Ford Ranger. No key on the Ranger. You see the damage right there on the rear, on the bed. Coming around to the back end back here. Looks pretty good. Got a hole. Uh, both the tail light assemblies have holes or cracked. Looking down the side over here, back up to the front. We have the peeling paint bumper trim right there is missing. You have the damage right here on the front quarter, front corner right there. And that's a look at lot number 75 your 1995 ford ranger folks we appreciate you watching uh on this uh if you are successful in buying one of the cars once you come and pay for it uh, the city of norfolk sets up their own appointments for payment and pick up on it please make sure that you read all the terms and conditions uh, on this auction all of them are different uh, and uh, 
once you have gotten your paperwork please make sure that you uh, go ahead and take care of that filing with dmv doing it in a timely manner within a week or so uh, so uh, if there are any issues we, we can uh, address those uh, before it gets uh, too far down the line thanks for watching if this was a help to you hit the like button and we'll see you out here on tuesday june the 11th from 10 a.m to 2 p.m for that inspection